So a bit of a crazy week for me. My phone blows up, my Twitter goes viral, my name's dropped all over wrestling news sites. And why? Well, I want to talk about it this week on Unhacked. <laughs> So what's up guys, in case you don't know me and this is your first time joining me, I am the social media superstar, I am the glitch in the system, and I am Jay Walker, professional wrestler based out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, trying to make a name for myself a little bit in the social media world. Now, everything blew up this week. It was WrestleMania weekend, a couple of controversial matches with the cinematic filmmaking design behind it. One of which was the Boneyard match with AJ Styles and The Undertaker, but the one that magically became attached to my name all over the dirt sheets was the Firefly Funhouse match between Bray Wyatt and John Cena. And I understand why it was so controversial. It was very different from anything we'd ever seen from the likes of WWE before. And if you know me, if you've seen me on the vlog here before, if you've ever attended some of my matches, you will know that I am so passionate about storytelling in professional wrestling. And so this match really connected with me, not so much at first. I was much like a lot of you where I wasn't really sure where things were going and I was kind of questioning the, the direction that they went. But at the end of the day, at the end of that segment, I was hooked. I was blown away by the creative genius behind the entire match. And so I decided in, in the middle of the night, insomnia induced, uh, to break down the synopsis of the story that they told throughout the match because I was so impressed by it. I thought that maybe people who didn't get it would appreciate maybe a deeper understanding of it. And I've done threads like this before. I did one for Kenny Omega and John Moxley from AEW, uh, their unsanctioned match. And I'd also done a career uh, retrospective on Bailey in a thread as well. But this one, for some reason, picked up. I went to bed after I tweeted it, and I woke up, and I got quite a good response, and I was pretty happy with it. But um, the momentum didn't stop throughout the day. And it was really gaining some attention. And all of a sudden, wrestling journalists were picking this up and sharing this. And I'd gotten a lot of great comments about it as far as, you know, the reception, the effort behind it and such. And everybody was tagging their friends who probably had an argument the night before as to whether or not this thing was great or not. It was really fun to see that stuff. But the next evening... All of a sudden, I'm getting tweets that this got picked up by wrestling websites. And I'm looking, and the headline is like, PCW Canadian indie wrestler Jay Walker's synopsis on the match. And like, th I've never seen anything like that before. Usually it would just be like a, a, the Funhouse match synopsis or whatever. But the fact that they name dropped me uh, was surreal. And uh, I appreciate it. I am absolutely grateful that you guys gave me the nod on that. And especially in the headline, it really... Um, helped gain traction even more so for the tweet. And I think for me in general, uh, my phone went absolutely insane. It was impossible to keep up with everybody's comments. I did my absolute best just to continue to engage in the conversation and just say thanks for appreciating uh, the tweet thread. Uh, not that that's really a big deal in my mind anyways. I just thought it was absolutely insane that wrestling websites were picking up on a tweet of mine of a WWE match. Um, it was a lot of fun to see. I, I do appreciate it. And I, I think it goes to show you that the wrestling audience really wants this, really wants that deep storytelling that go on, that uh, progresses over years and, and sees character changes. And it's something that we haven't seen a lot of. And again, I said earlier that I'm very passionate about this stuff. I, I think it's the direction that we need to take in pro wrestling. I think that uh, now after seeing this, we're going to be seeing more and more of it and it not being taken for granted. And it's going to be interesting to see the creative minds of those within the wrestling world uh, really try to capitalize on this and really try to tell more dynamic, interesting stories. And I think one of the key points of the Firefly Funhouse match was that it was sort of left open for interpretation. Rather than tell you exactly what they're doing, here's what we're presenting you. If it connects with you, great. If not, sorry, maybe not your cup of tea, but there were other things that would. And I think that's some of the best stories told is when it's more open for your own interpretation. It allows for you to identify with it for different reasons. It connects with more people that way rather than being so direct and in your face and, and this is what it is and that's how you have to take it. This was on another level and I was thoroughly impressed and I loved it and I went back uh, just to do the 
Twitter thread, I went back and watched it three times. It was absolutely amazing piece of artwork and uh, I even got uh, a nod from Bray Wyatt about the Twitter thread and I, I, I mean, not even a word was exchanged, but I, I think it was just an appreciation for helping continue the conversation around the match and to show that it really was this beautiful thing rather than some random nostalgia and jokes. Um, so thank you to everybody who shared that thread, who put me on their website, who asked me to do interviews after. Uh, I might have some podcasts lined up because of it. Thank you to everybody for checking this out. If this is your first one, please, I would love it if you would subscribe. It is so hard to make a name for yourself uh, in, in the central Canadian wrestling scene. Not many people do it. There's two or three on that list that have gone on to do bigger and better things. I want to do bigger and better things. And to do that, I'm doing this. I'm telling my story. I'm trying to connect with as many of you as possible. Get the word out about what I'm doing. Um, as of right now, obviously, we're just kind of sitting around waiting for the next opportunity to present themselves because of this whole quarantine and COVID-19 thing. But uh, there are plenty of ways to check me out. First, subscribe to this. Follow me on Twitter. And then we can get the ball rolling with everything else. I am always active on Twitter, always engaging with people. So please don't be shy. Thanks for checking this one out, guys. I have a whole back catalog of over a year's worth of content, my matches and stuff, in the library. If you've got time, if you're interested, please go check them out and check out my little versions of storytelling. But until next time, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for all the support for, for so long now. It is insane to see uh, how many people out there actually care about somebody like me. So again, guys, thank you. Take care. And that's me logging off until next week.